Good morning, everybody. It's Carrie from KDS Insurance Services. Hope you are having a great Monday wherever you are. Uh, if you're hearing all that noise in the background, guys, it's pouring down where I am, <laughs> down here in the Houston area. So I apologize if you hear that distracting ding, ding, ding on my metal roof. Um, wanted to come in today and talk to you um, and continue the series on how to become an agent and some steps to help you make that decision if that's the way that you are um, thinking about going. As I mentioned, I think it's a wonderful career. The longevity of it is fantastic. Um, you can work as long as you want, as hard as you want, for as short amount of period as you want too, depending on what your goals are. So, um, but it's all on you. Remember, you're self-employed and so what you get out of it is what you put into it, just like in anything else that we do in our lives. You, you have to be willing to um, make the commitment. So today I wanted to talk to, to you a little bit about employees and how important it is on the front end uh, to get an employee uh, and how to go about finding those employees. I will tell you when I started my independent agency um, in 2013, well, let's back up a minute. Let's go in chronological order. When I opened my Allstate agency in 2010, um, Allstate required that you have at least one employee full-time the day you open your doors. You, you cannot open um, an Allstate agency unless you have an employee on site and ready to go um, the day that you open. And that's not something that is negotiable. You have to have that. So when you're talking about opening a captive agency and you are working on your budgetary requirements, you're going to have to put that in right away. Um, and in Texas, the average uh, hourly salary for somebody who is licensed, not necessarily a seasoned uh, producer, but a um, licensed insurance agent producer, the the average, the very basic um, per hour rate is going to run you about $12. That's pretty standard. I think you're not going to find that for a licensed individual um, any less than that. And then depending on the, the longevity of their career and their experience, um, you know, that, that number is definitely going to increase. Um, so that's a really important piece of your planning um, when you're going to open a captive agents, agency is you need to work with that age, the captive carrier and find out exactly what the requirements are for you to open your business and if you have to do it with an employee. Because, um, you know, that's about $1,250 right off the top that you're going to have to come up with um, for probably four to five months before you really start getting your business going and your sales going and your pipeline and all of that. So make sure you're putting that into your upfront um, budgets and your thought processes. When I opened my independent agency in 2013, because I did fire Allstate and decided to go independent, um, what I decided to do at that point was, because it was my business and I didn't have any of those restrictions or requirements because of I, I'm independent and I work for, you know, I represent multiple carriers, I decided that what I really wanted to do was go to my county and ask them for, ask about any internship programs that they have for young people who are trying to better themselves and um, they're, they, the background checks and all of that's done on the county level. So you are then not, you, you are going to the county and saying, okay, I need this type of person for this many hours. Um, and the, here's the kind of the criteria that I'm looking for. And then they go through their, their processes and they come up with some candidates that could potentially work for you as an intern. And I find that extremely rewarding, not only because I'm, I'm having somebody in my office to help me, but I then get to shape and mold and train that individual in the manner that I want and in the methods and methodology that I use. And so I went to the county and I said, this is what I'm looking for. And they provided me an intern. And I, I, pro I think looking back on it, I had two interns in the very beginning that uh, just did not work out. They didn't have the kind of 
work and responsibility levels that I was looking for. But then I, I got a, th a third candidate and they came in and they worked for me for almost two and a half years. And it was a great opportunity for them um, because during that two year period, not only did the, then I then hire them as my own employee, but I helped them go through the, the training and the classes to get themselves licensed as an insurance agent. I made the decision in the beginning that I could hire somebody that wasn't licensed, that could just do uh, administrative type things for me, not answer any questions, not answer any insurance questions, but just provide the support that I needed for processing and paperwork and filing and answering the phones and doing all of that kind of stuff. And so I, I personally made that decision and it worked out extremely well for me. I had this employee for almost two and a half years. And it was a great way to give back to my community as well. Uh, that's a really important part of my philosophy. And um, it was a great opportunity for me to be able to do that. So go to your county and see what kind of internships they have available. Also go to your high schools because a lot of the high schools have work related uh, programs where after school they can come in and do some work for you depending on you know the amount of hours that you're looking for. And then I would also tell you to, another option for you is to use an employment service. Um, go to, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive. They're gonna charge you on top of what you're willing to pay an hourly rate, but then they do everything too. You're, you're, you don't file the taxes, you don't have any of that overhead. Um, it's all on their responsibility to do all the background checks and they maintain the employee and the employee's gotta fill in and meet certain criteria and so that's another really, really good way to go, kind of while you're getting your feet under you in starting this business. So my, my first recommendations are gonna to be to go to your county, see what type of work programs they have available, do some interviews and find somebody that you think is gonna work with your personality and meet the requirements that you want in the day-to-day -day operations of your business. Then also go to an employment service and the employment service is gonna do everything for you too. Oh, and by the way, the county does all of the payroll and all of that too. So you're not responsible for that until you actually decide to hire that person. Um, and they're not gonna be a, an intern any longer, but they're actually gonna be your employee. Kind of works the same way with the um, employment agency. If you have somebody that comes in and they work for you and then you decide that you wanna hire them and make them an employee, you can certainly do that. One of the things about being um, having employees versus an intern or working with an in, um, a employment agency is you're gonna have the taxes and the paperwork and the time consuming part of uh, reporting all of that. That's another reason I decided to do this in the very beginning because I didn't wanna be bogged down by having to fill in forms, submit them to the IRS, um, and waste all of my time that I needed to be selling and growing my business on paperwork. So you've got to figure out what the trade-off is for you. What's the best that's going to fit into your timeline, your um, business plan, and then kind of go from there. Um, so I what I would tell you first and foremost is after you make your decision as to which type of agency you're gonna have, then you need to go the next step and find out if you've gone to a captive type situation, what those requirements are, and then work on your budgets and really decide the kind of person that you want to be in your office. What are you looking for, the characteristics? I would tell you in my mind, the mo two, well, several of the most important things are maturity level, responsibility level, geographical location, and work history. That's really important. You need to get recommendations if you're gonna hire direct, because you need to understand what their work ethic is prior to the time that you do the interview. And then I would tell you that um, in my experience, you need to be doing at least five to six interviews, maybe more, depending on um, you know the type of individual that you're looking for, and then um, how they do on your on your um, interview. Because remember, any employee is going to be a representation of you, and so you're going to have to be very specific about the type of things that you're looking for. 
um, because they are going to be the first, if they're going to be on the phones especially, they're going to be that first line of somebody calling in. And so you're going to have to be very, very specific about what you expect up front. Um, because I will tell you, any business, one of the biggest assets, if not the biggest asset, is the employees that are in the business. So you got to do your due diligence, you got to do your research, you got to do your homework, and you, you got to drill down and find that um, right person um, to partner with you in your agency. So I hope this is helpful for you. Please stop by my channel, if you will, on YouTube, Carrie Devlin Scroggins. Um, this is an ongoing series that I'm doing for people who are looking to get into the insurance market. Um, these are for your educational purposes only. I'm expressing my opinions. Uh, if you disagree with those opinions, that's great. We live in a free country. Um, these messages are just designed to help you kind of get through the process if this is a decision that you're thinking about. So please stop by, leave me a comment, and if you will, hit that bell so you know the next time I post a video. Have, have, you have a wonderful week wherever you are. Get out there, hit the ground running, and get those sales going. And I will see you in my next video. God bless.